Good evening, everyone. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all to our seventh webinar organized by COVID Nigerian Medics. And the title of today's webinar is, you know, what are the possibilities of having a universal health coverage in Nigeria? As the saying goes, health is wealth. And having access to basic health care should be a top priority for every nation. And we can see this is highlighted in you know, the ongoing COVID pandemic. So my name is Sadia Gumi, and I'm a, I'm a doctor working for NHS UK. Uh, I would like to introduce my co-moderator. He's a Hello. senior university in health systems and management. Yes. And he's also the course director for MSc, which is Masters in International Health Management and Leadership, School of Health and Related Research at University of Sheffield. I would like to welcome Dr. Mohammed Sadiq. Thank you very much, Saidia, for, for that introduction. I think I would like to start by, first of all, quickly running us through the program for today, if you can have that slide. I would be introducing oh. the main speaker next, and then we'll have the uh, talk from uh, Professor Mohammed Nasir Sambo, who is a key speaker. Then we'll have contribution from uh, Dr. Olatunji about sort of specific things about oil state. And then we'll have contribution from a number of other uh, chief executives of health, health agencies in their states, uh, from Kano, from Katsina. Okay. So then we can have from Shamsu. Uh, uh, also from Katsina, Halima from Kano, uh, Dr. Dada from Bauchi, and Dr. Ogunsola from uh, Ogun State. After input from State, we're going to hear from uh, Uzo Okoma Ofolue, who is going to give us the uh, kind of from the perspective of uh, someone with sort of health economics background, what are the opportunities? What are the opportunities that are there uh, post-COVID so that we can accelerate achieving universal health coverage? And uh, Dr. Magashi would then give us the uh, sort of civil society perspective, their role in accelerating achieving universal health coverage. We then have a quick summary because we know internet connectivity can be a challenge. Uh, we'll try and summarize some of the key points that have been covered and then we'll have questions and answers. We want to have an opportunity to uh, get input from our audience. Uh, so while you're not speaking, mute your microphones, please, so that we can all benefit from the knowledge that will be shared here and also contribute to the conversation with the sole aim of finding practical, tangible steps that will help us uh, move forward. So without uh, wasting so much of your time, I'll now introduce our main speaker, who I believe is known by uh, most of us here. Uh, Professor Mohammed Nasser Sambo is the Executive Secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme. He is a professor of health policy and management with interest in health financing, healthcare financing. He is a graduate of the prestigious University of Just Medical School. He's a fellow of the West African College of Physicians. He's got a number of uh, other postgraduate qualifications, both within and outside Nigeria. He is widely published with more than 70 articles, uh, 70 articles in reputable journals. Uh, he held several academic and professional roles in government and international organizations. So we are really fortunate to have you here. I think I can spend half the time that we have today without finishing reading his citation. So I'll leave it here and welcome Professor Sambo to give us his talk. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, let me uh, establish a protocol and stand on it. The topic uh, given to me is universal health coverage in Nigeria. What are the possibilities? Uh, I have tried to adopt, next slide, I have tried to adopt the following uh, outlines to, next slide, Sadia. Okay, I will adopt the following outline to give a brief introduction to universal health coverage 
as as well as how progress of UH has covered, what are the achievements so far, and moving moving ahead, what are the possibilities and call to action. As a matter of introduction, next slide, please. Okay, excellent. Uh, as an introduction, one in 10 Nigerians, that is about more than 2.9 million, are living in poverty. This is according to the National Bureau for Statistics. And this situation is worsened by triple burden of uh, traditional infection, non communicable disease, imagine and uh, re imagined diseases. With more than 562, uh, uh, with, with maternal mortality rate of 562, 500,000, infant mortality rate of 67,000, 5,000, 5, Nigeria has one of the worst maternal and child health indices in the world. We can uh, we can only uh, only very few Nigerians have any form of health insurance, and the world is is a global village. And Nigeria is is no exception. No one is safe until everyone is safe. What we can only uh, we can only be safe when health system can ensure that everyone can access health care they require when they when they require it and when they need it. Next slide, please. So. In talking about universal health coverage, we are talking about we are talking about ensuring that all people have access to needed key promoting preventive, curative, and rehabilitative services uh, of good quality and affordable, uh, affordable cost without the risk of uh, financial hardship linking uh, linking link to paying for care services. We are all aware of the importance of healthcare financing. The whole uh, essence of healthcare financing is to be able to mobilize resources that can guarantee uh, protection from, from, from financial uh, hazard that is imposed as a result of poverty. And if we look at the Global Developmental Goal Agenda, uh, SDG, uh, Goal 3 ensure, uh, is to ensure healthy lives and promote well being for all at all ages. This is the tight end target 3.8 is attainment of universal health coverage. So universal health coverage is a, is, 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 is a global uh, agenda uh, under uh, encapsulated in SDG. And uh, it is important uh, to, to ensure that every country is, uh, is, is positioned to attainment of universal health coverage by the year 2030. Uh, one of the shortest ways, if you look at the, the three elements of universal health coverage, the key element in, in, in each in ensuring financial uh, risk protection, that is through effective healthcare financing mechanism that will guarantee uh, that will guarantee provision of healthcare. So, if we are discussing universal health coverage, in, in we are interested in knowing some key uh, uh, key factors. In tracking progress, next slide, Sadia. Key factors in tracking the progress of, of financing healthcare in any country. This include one, the total health expenditure, which is which will be at least four to five percent of GDP. Uh, the out-of-pocket expenditure not exceeding thirty to forty percent, uh, thirty to forty percent of a total health expenditure. We all know that. Uh, out of pocket expenditure is one of the most progressive healthcare financing mechanisms. So countries are urged to bring it as low as 30 to 40 percent. In fact, if it is below, it's better. Then we're also looking at the proposal of population covered by prepayment and risk pooling system. This is where the national health insurance, this is where health insurance scheme is very, very pertinent. Because health insurance is an arrangement that guarantees pooling. Full pooling of resources as well as pooling of risk. So, if you have a, a health a, a kind of repayment mechanism that covers about greater than ninety percent of population, you are moving in the right direction. Then, eighty percent of the poorest of the of, of the poorest uh, that is forty percent of the population uh, have effective coverage with quality health care services. This is one of the key issues in, in attainment of universal health coverage, the proportion of people that have access to quality healthcare services. 
And uh, the last but not important, last but not the least, among the key trackers is ability to have vulnerable segment of the population covered, because the vulnerables do not have access to financial uh, to, to finances, and, and therefore they ought, there must be an arrangement to cover them hundred percent. So in 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 in, in undertaking a journey to the universal health coverage from the national health insurance perspective. Uh, it is important to quickly uh, uh, the evolution of the national health insurance scheme. Next slide. Next slide. Sir, yeah. uh, the national health insurance scheme established in the in, in 1999. Now is called CAP 42 of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of Parliamentary Act. Uh, the law provides for non-mandatory participation in the health. We are talking about the national health insurance scheme and Nigerian journey stores. To, to, towards attainment of universal health coverage. Uh, as I said, it, it is important to, to recognize the fact that the National Health Insurance Scheme was established in 1999 by, uh, by Decree 35, and uh, it has gone through a series of, uh, of, of evolutionary uh, development. But suffice it to say that in the last uh, few, in the last few months, uh, the, 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 the Nigerian vision of the National Health Insurance Scheme has been changed. Uh, now it is leading to a, a leading agency committed to achieving financial access to quality health care for all Nigerians. And uh, the, the mission is to mobilize financial, uh, mobilize and pull financial resources for strategic for chosen of affordable and quality health care for all Nigerians. And the, the NHS has core values, which, which include commitment, responsiveness, Efficiency, accountability, and tra transparency and equity. Uh, what are the key objectives of the key objectives of the program under the National Health Insurance Scheme? The key objective is to ensure that every Nigerian has access to good health care services. Number two, to protect families from financial hardship of good medical bills. Number three, to ensure high standards of health care services delivery to all Nigerians. What are the various programs under the National Health Insurance Scheme? Next slide, please. Next slide. The various programs under the National Health Insurance Scheme uh, include uh, the formal sector social insurance, the uh, organized private sector uh, under the formal sector. We have what we call newly introduced program that is called Group Individual and Family Social Insurance Program. And we have uh, basic health care provision funds, which is being driven by the state. It is important to, uh, to, to recognize the fact that health insurance in Nigeria is a decentralized system, whereby there is a national health insurance scheme at the, at the federal level, and there are state health insurance agencies at subnational level. This state health insurance scheme they are expected to cover the formal sector of the state social health insurance state uh, employees, the local government employees, as well as to drive the federal government initiative, which is the basic health care provision fund. Uh, let me quickly say that uh, for the past 21 years, NHS has gone into a uh, next slide, please. So uh, Nigeria has gone into has to inter intervene by setting up a, a very high-powered independent uh, uh, panel of inquiry, which, uh, which investigated the activities of the National Health Insurance team because it is emerged in a very serious uh, crisis. So as a result of that, the governing council was dissolved. The, the former executive secretary was substituted by my home self. And when I came as the chief executive officer, I, 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 I introduced the rebranded agenda of the National Health Insurance Scheme, which is anchored on three, on, on three points. Number one, restoring a value system that will transform NHS into a credible result-oriented organization. Number two, engendering transparency and accountability in the entire operations of the scheme. Number three, Accelerating the drive towards attainment of achieving universal health for access to quality health care for all Nigerians. Uh, we went further to deepen the implementation of the uh, of three point agenda by constructing the agenda in elements. Under number one, we 
through the, uh, the, the engagement of, of, of organizational experts, we came up with the term value system that are very pertinent in, 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 in reshaping or branding the, the, the value system of the organization. And these are, the, these are well captured in this. Uh, we, 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 we pursue this through a, a retreat, a, a retreat with, our, with our top management, expanded management, where we collect where information was collected from all members of the scheme next slide please information was collected from all members of the scheme and we came up with the three with, the, with, with this 10 value system which include aspect of a good working environment unity of purpose and direction synergy and collaboration teamwork and spirit as well as the last one on equity and fairness when we when we were we were able to package this we now introduce them into Looks the like. National Health Insurance Scheme. And this is one of the reasons why we have a very strict uh, transparency and accountability with students. Number three, openness in the, in, the, uh, in the operations of the National Health Insurance Scheme, adequate information to stakeholders. Uh, number five, stakeholders uh, involvement. And lastly, ICT delivery and NHIS. For the accelerating the drive, which is the third, third, third point, is uh, we, 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 we pursue them in two front efforts, one consolidation and the second one innovation. So the, all these uh, elements, we push them into a national insurance scheme, which are due to ensuring that every element in, 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 in is implemented. And what are the achievements that we have recorded so far? So um, what are the achievements we have recorded in the last one and a half years? Number one, restoration of internal peace and harmony in the National Health Insurance Scheme. Number two, recreating the organizational image and restoring stakeholders, uh, stakeholders' confidence in the system. Number three, addressing critical human resource administrative financial management bottleneck as, uh, bottlenecks as well as technical and operational challenges. Example, NHIS drug supply system branding. Let me talk about this NHIS drug supply system, uh, drug supply system. Uh, under the National Health Insurance Scheme, we are all aware of the incessant complaint by the enrollees who always, uh, who always blame health insurance for not giving them uh, 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 quality drugs because whenever a, 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 a drug that is, not, uh, that, that is generic is prescribed, people regard generic drug as, 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 as a fake drug. So we brought all the manufacturers, uh, drug manufacturers in Nigeria into a meeting uh, with a view to uh, convincing them you know, uh, to, to, to come up with, uh, with a strategy of, of manufacturing drug of good quality with NHS in, inscription. This strategy was the same strategy was, was employed during uh, PTF. We all remember during PTF, you have so many drugs and commodities with PTF inscription, and anywhere you go, you see the availability of those drugs at a very uh, affordable rate. So through this uh, collaboration with drug manufacturers, we have agreed that under the National Health Insurance Scheme, we are going to be we are going to get these manufacturers to be producing drugs that are cheaper, with a generic, generic cheaper, but with NHS uh, inscription. So that anywhere you go as an enrollee under the National Health Insurance Scheme, such drugs are prescribed to you, you know that they are not fake drugs. And uh, we are working with so many agencies in that, including NAFDAQ, including NIMA, including all the uh, Ministry of Industry. In fact, we have reached a final stage where we will very soon call on, make uh, advertise, finalize the document, advertise for the companies that are willing to participate so that we can give them the go ahead. It is our belief that if this, if this is introduced, it will stem the rising cost of drugs as a result of inflation, and it will guarantee, it will restore uh, a release confidence with the system. Then clear number two and number four, clearance of backlog of accreditation of health maintenance organization and healthcare providers. Before I came, two years before I came to the National Health Insurance Scheme, there was an attempt to re-accredit HMOs, 
and uh, for for a very long time it has not taken place. But uh, during this few, short period of our our stewardship, we have been able to accredit the old HMOs. Also been able to uh, to, to, to to enroll new HMOs, and it is important to say that throughout the uh, since the inception of of the national health insurance scheme no hmo has, has been uh, has been uh, disaccredited or uh, because of, of poor performance but i'm happy to refer that very recently we have we have cancelled the accreditation of 10 hmos and we have redistributed their lives to, because they are not performing because they they fail to meet the criteria that has been set for the accreditation uh, it is 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 a very tough exercise but we stood our ground and uh, we have been able to redistribute all the lives of this HMO and, and the business is, 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 is ongoing. Recovery of funds owed by, by healthcare providers, by health maintenance organization. When I came to the National Health Insurance Scheme, there were a lot of complaints by healthcare providers. The HMOs were not, were not uh, they were, were owing them huge sum of, of, of money. Then I employ a, a, a decentralized system. And through that effort, we have been able to recover over 2.3 billion naira from the HMOs to, to healthcare facilities. This, this 2.3 billion naira was all, uh, the, 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 health, the healthcare facility has have almost uh, forgotten about it. But through our effort, we have been able to restore that, to, restore, to, restore, to, to recover that. And this singular act that we have employed, has really put HMOs into their toes as we are moving forward. Then the ongoing ENHIS project. Uh, it is important to say that under the National Health Insurance Scheme, uh, in the 21st century, no successful health insurance can be implemented without automation. And uh, for, the, for more than a decade, several attempts have, have been made to ensure that ENHIS come into, 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 into place, but uh, it, it is always, uh, it is, it is, it is always hit the, the, the break cord. But uh, within the one and a half years we stayed, we have been able to review all the previous efforts that have taken place. And uh, within one year, we have been able to, to develop a, 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 an overaching ENHIS uh, framework. And uh, we approach a, a, a government-owned enterprise, which is Nudge Concert, and we employ what we what we call G2G, government-to-government -government, uh, arrangements. And through that, we have been able to deploy uh, the, 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 the ENHR system, which has been approved by the Bureau for Public Enterprises and uh, approved by the Federal Executive Council. As I'm talking to you, there is massive infrastructural development of, 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 of ENHIS across the country. Fiber optic is being led, uh, MPLS is being, is being installed, and through the ENHIS system, we have been able to restore the, 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 restore the ID card production. Already we have acquired about 1,000, million ID cards with the scanner, with the, with the printers, and uh, very soon we will deploy them into into, into action. Uh, strategic infrastructural development. Despite the fact that NHS has stayed for a very long time, it has about nine zonal offices, and it has about 39 state operational offices. And uh, in spite of this, this 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 heavy structure, all our offices are oriented. And all our, uh, even part of our head, uh, offices in Abuja are orange. We have developed a, a framework whereby over a period of time, we will, st we will use our part of our money that uh, from investment to embark on massive infrastructural development by developing or, or constructing prototype offices. And this has, uh, has, has scaled in, uh, in the process in the group of public procurement and uh, very soon we will have a very repeating office and, uh, and a small prototype, prototype offices at some national level. Uh, then health insurance under our roof. When I came to the National Health Insurance Scheme, the state health insurance agencies, which were, cre were created 
to, to fast track implementation uh, attainment of universal health coverage, we are not in talking terms of the national health insurance. So there is no framework, effective framework for coordination. And uh, we, 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 we spearheaded the development of what you call health insurance under our roof, which will serve as a platform for, for coordination of all health insurance activity in Nigeria. And we, have, we were able to hold, a, to, to hold a retreat last year and we formed a technical working group. And now the state health insurance and the national health insurance team are working together towards attainment of universal health coverage. Then we, when we also came, the basic care provision fund, we met it at a very stagnant stage because there was a conflict between the, the NHIS NPSCDA gateway and the Ministry of Health on one hand, and there was a conflict between the National Health and the Federal Ministry of Health and the National Assembly on the other hand. But uh, through our effort and the effort of the Honorable Minister of Health, we have been able to iron out that problem. And uh, uh, as in, what's happening now is that there has been massive enrollment under the Basic Health Care Provision Fund. Most of the states have received their, their first, first tranche, and in the last two weeks, I've been going from one state to another to launch the, the, the implementation. The, then the development of a 10-year strategic plan. Uh, for the past 20, uh, 21 years, NHIS has been operating with no any strategic plan. For the first time, we have been able to develop a 10-year strategic plan, which has undergone a lot of scrutiny and it, uh, the process of developing involved, uh, involved a lot of stakeholders. We now have a very clear roadmap for attainment of universal health coverage. Other, uh, other things that we have been able to achieve through innovative financing initiative include establishment of what we call GIFSHIP, Group Individual Family Social Insurance Program. This program is supposed to complete Meant the uh, the former son to people and also to bring a uh, different uh, family into the system. We are working with World Bank and other partners to develop what is called catastrophic fund for cancer. The amount of money that is being generated by National Health Insurance Scheme is so small that it cannot take care of chronic ailments. But we believe that introduction of this catastrophic fund we can cost. Uh, payment for cancer. Uh, World Bank has indicated it is willingness to participate. Other partners from the sector have indicated their willingness to participate. And the NHS is ready to put part of its investment into this fund. With this fund, we can address to, to some high, to some very good degree, uh, 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 address the issue of some chronic disease in like cancer. We are talking with the National Health Insurance Scheme. We have concluded all arrangements to the enrollment of the national of the NYSC uh, into the national insurance scheme. We are waiting for the budget so that we can roll out the, uh, the, 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 the this this system. Then we, these are some of the initiatives that we are putting in place. Another thing that is this worthy of mention, which is which is supposed to be mentioned at the high level, uh, high up, when when I talk addressing. Uh, critical human resource and administrative bottlenecks. I met National Health Insurance Scheme with about over 1,300 uh, staff, only for seven uh, healthcare professionals. And uh, I met the over 18 uh, offices. In all states, you have a, a, state, a health insurance office. Some states, you have only seven staff. Some eight, majority less than 10. And uh, we are talking about universal health coverage. 40% of the total workforce of NHIS is within the headquarters of, of within the federal capital. And uh, if you look at the people in the federal capital, majority of them uh, have one form of healthcare delivery services or the other. Majority of them are, are, are government workers who are certainly uh, included in the formal sector. So what we are trying to do is to develop, a, we have developed a framework of decentralization. We have been able to post about 147 staff from the headquarters to the to, to the state. Even though this, this, this is not easy, 
because of the in-depth uh, vested interest that are working assiduously to, 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 to ensure that that did not succeed. But we have stood our ground. We have conducted a lot of things to stabilize NHIS and to move NHIS forward toward attainment of universal health coverage. We, 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 through all this effort that we have done, we are very optimistic that by the time the state health insurance agencies come into full blown activities, by the time we are able to consolidate all the, 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 the problems that uh, enable the NHIS uh, and we, we, we address the problems, and by the time we, copy, we embark on the innovative healthcare financing strategy, we are very positive that we will succeed at the end of the day. So moving forward, what are the critical success factors that will enable us attain universal health coverage? We need a lot of political support uh, at all levels, at the federal government level, at uh, state level and local government level. We need uh, a, a, a quick passage of mandatory health insurance bill. Uh, it is important to, to, to inform you that in the last one and a half years, we have pushed in collaboration with the, with the, with the, with the National Assembly to amend the decree, to amend the law establishing the national health insurance scheme so that it can be, uh, it can be, um, it can be made mandatory. And I'm happy to report here that the two, two chambers of the national health, uh, national assembly have passed the law, uh, have passed the law. It is now awaiting transmission to Mr. President for assent. This time around, I think that we are going to succeed to get the president to assent it. Because if you look at the health next level agenda of Mr. President, attainment of mandatory uh, health insurance is number one in the health in the health agenda. So uh, what we are doing with respect to this uh, amendment of the law, we are just working for the president to ensure that his first level of uh, uh, his, his point, first point in the healthcare is fully realized. In moving forward, we also need uh, a strategic health health, health uh, stakeholders engagement and partnership. We are even looking at uh, collaboration with the University of uh, Sheffield. We, discussion has started so that we can uh, we can leverage on the on the overarching leadership uh, program that they, they, they are mounting. I think the state health insurance agencies, as well as our state uh, offices, will benefit quite a lot. We are working with uh, Bill and Melinda Gates from uh, BMG uh, and, and, and R4D to support us to support us to support us in that process. We also need uh, effective private sector participation going forward. We also need to in, step in uh, working with evidence so that whatever we do, we have valid. Then finally. We need also to consolidate sustainable finances that we are working on. Also, we have to look at other things that are the strategies that will ensure that we have more money for health. We have more money for health, and we have more health for money, and consolidating the innovative financing that will facilitate uh, and, and, and facilitating consensus. Will but I want to stop here, but in conclusion, I want to say that with institutionalization of the ongoing reforms and the engagement of stakeholders by, by NHIS, attainment of universal health coverage is not, just, is not just a possibility. We believe it shall be a reality. Hence, our mission to be a leading agency committed to achieving health financial access to healthcare, to quality, uh, access to quality healthcare for all Nigerians. We will achieve this by mobilizing and pooling resources for strategic purchasing of affordable and, and quality healthcare services for all Nigerians. Your support alongside other stakeholders is very critical. I thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to addressing some of your questions and, and, and contributions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Prof. Um, we'll give you some time to take a break, and uh, uh, We'll come to the question and answers towards uh, the latter part of the event. Um, okay. So we've allowed the conversation to exceed the time limit because you would agree with me that, that we need to have this sort of foundation 
set set for the rest of the conversation we'll go on our program because we want to hear so we've had what is happening at the national level while we reflect on that i would like to call on the uh, some of the people from state to give us some insight about some of the development that will contribute to this conversation go to dr halima dr halima Mijinio. Also from Kano. Hello, good evening, everyone. Hello, good evening. So, um, I'm Dr. Lima from Kano, and um, I would like to start by saying that uh, we all know that uh, healthcare delivery in Nigeria is characterized by poor indices and predominantly financed by out of pocket. And uh, Nigeria is ranked highest in the African countries. And we all know that uh, universal health coverage is a critical component of sustainable development, and there is need for uh, sustainable healthcare financing to achieve universal health coverage. The process of uh, creating the Kano State Contributor Healthcare Management Agency uh, emanated from the proposal of the NHIS to give state governments the power to create organizations to manage state healthcare programs to facilitate achieving universal health coverage in the states with the supervision of the NHIS taking cognizance of the social, cultural, and religious factors of the state. So um, the state agency was established under law three of 2000 with the vision of achieving universal health coverage for all the residents of the state, irrespective of various levels of health care. And uh, the so responsibility of the agency is uh, managing the state's uh, contributory healthcare scheme, which is a system of advanced financing of health expenditure through contributions, donations, or taxes paid into a pool to pay for all or part of services specified by the benefit package. And um, the, the agency um, has a board, governing board, and we started with a very lean structure of five departments and uh, the staff were deployed from the civil service. We started with a formal sector program covering the employees of the state and local government, and their contributions were mainly from the salaries, and it ranged from 1,004. Okay. So the contributions of the civil servants are mainly from their uh, salaries. We also have political office holders that contribute 4,000, 60,000, that is the maximum. And, um, then we move on to the informal sector covering in the vulnerable group health program, which covers the vulnerable uh, group in the state. We received some funding from the state and we covered all the institution homes, that is the children homes, the remand homes, the IDP camps, the 13 rehabilitation centers are all funded by the state and they are all under the scheme. And then also there is the basic health care provision uh, uh, program. Fund, so sorry. And um, so all these, um, um, so far we have uh, covered over 400,000 civil servants and their dependents. That is more than 80% of the population of the civil servants and their dependents in the state. And uh, they are all assessing care in the uh, facilities. The, at the point of the provider of the choice, and if they have um, any issues that they require, Required uh, to see a specialist, they call the agency and we give them authorization code and they go to the secondary facilities that have uh, the accreditation for that specific service. And they all, all the programs on the state have um, uh, one, we have one ben benefit package and one pool. And the benefit package comprises of services that uh, take cognizance of the prevailing local illnesses and uh, that is a local mobility and mortality profile. We, the forms of uh, payment to the facilities, mainly capitation and fee for service. Out of the total funds that accrues, we paid 74.2% uh, to the as capitation and 14.6% as fee for service. We do not use uh, health maintenance uh, organizations. The agency pays directly to the health facilities. And um, so far we have about 562 facilities out of which 40 are secondary facilities, 75 are private facilities, 447 are uh, primary, uh, primary facilities age in the scheme, and they provide services to the uh, release that, have, that are in their specific facilities. 
And the majority of the enrollees that are in the scheme are children of uh, one to 10 years. Uh, uh, some of the successes that we have recorded, uh, uh, the, the thing the, in Kano said, we have a very high level of political support. We had a takeoff grant by the state government and uh, it was used in setting up the I, ICT infrastructure based on the PPP arrangement. And it's considered one of the best and robust system in the health insurance in Nigeria. And uh, also, we have established a contact center. Initially, it was it was manual, but it's now automated. We have ten dedicated lines, function lines that operate twenty four hours. We deal they deal with uh, inquiries and complaints. And we also have four lines that uh, give uh, out uh, authorization code. As I said, we don't use HMOs. And we also have a claim processing unit. Uh, most of us are, as I said, we are deployed from the civil service, and most of us are from the uh, hospitals. So we learn to, to process claims uh, on the job. We learned it while we were in the agency. So we process claims and uh, we pay to the facilities. We have developed uh, monitoring and evaluation tools for the facilities. And we go around inspection. We have a, a unit that goes routinely to the facilities to inspect. And we also go there's effective implementation of, of the scheme. We have developed a referral system, a communication strategy, and a framework for the vulnerable targeting pregnant women and children under five. And um, we received funds to register 20,000 pregnant women and uh, uh, children under five across the 44 LGAs of the state. And we have uh, commenced, uh, and also we have low enrollment in the informal sector. Um, there are a few um, institutions that have refused to join mandatory and but the way forward is uh, we, are have, we are having some dialogue with them and then there's a review of the law and the operational guidelines because as i said the contributions are fixed and then we also uh, observe some um lacunas in the law and then there's a uh, there's a plan to develop a five-year strategic plan for the scheme and then and um, also um as we go around the facilities uh we keep keep on uh, increasing the awareness of the health workers on attitude to a release and we intend to introduce a performance needs financing this is highly supported by his excellency who um uh, wants uh, the best performing good good evening ladies and gentlemen my name is dr Mansur dada i'm the executive secretary of Boche state health contributory management agency um the Boche State Health Contributory Management Agency called Bashma. Hello? Go ahead. We are hearing you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Implements the Boche State Health Contributory Scheme. It was established in 2017 in November. And we started, I came in as the executive secretary in 2018. And then we started operating in 2019. So right now, uh, uh, we have three major concepts uh, which we are working, which are the basis for the establishment of the scheme. We have the we have the legal framework, the institutional framework, and the operational framework on the legal framework we have finished with that that has to do with the law that establishes the agency and then after that we went to the, the issue of administration administration as the institutional framework we have the building the staff and all the documents that are needed for the development of the agency and we are now into the operations. Right now, we have three types of programs that we are implementing in the agency. We have the formal sector, the informal sector, and the vulnerable program. Right now, we are we have reached an advanced stage in all the three programs. Uh, if we look at the Borchester State Health Contributory Scheme, it's just like the other state social health insurance scheme in the 36 states plus one 
and it's one of the building blocks for achieving universal health coverage. Uh, if we look at the the issue of the primary health care under our roof, that is what has actually helped the states in getting the state primary health care development agency. And now we have the state health contributory management agency, so the state social health insurance scheme. Um, we are hoping that the primary health care development agency and the primary health care centers will provide the services at the primary health care level, while the state social health insurance scheme will uh, serve as, uh, will provide the financial means of getting the services. And we are hoping if we address this uh, issue at the primary health care level, we'll have a very good That's what We are hoping with the primary health care services and the social health insurance services, we can be able to achieve something meaningful before the year 2030. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, I will then call on the final person on to give us a bit of perspective from said Dr. Elijah Ogunsola. Are you on the call? Can you unmute yourself and speak? Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm greatly elated to be in this group. Um, let me appreciate the ED of NHIS. Our own perspective in Ogun State has not been different for what. Uh, has been said by other speakers. Uh, we've been working close. I've been working closely with the EES of the Health Insurance Agency in Ogun State. And for us, uh, our first point of call to achieving universal health coverage is like we are leveraging on the basic health care provision fund, which is available to the state. Uh, we are uh, currently the state health insurance agency is registering the eligibles. Uh, the vulnerable across the 20 LGs. And uh, we, as the primary care board, we're also making sure we're getting ready our health facility to be able to provide services for all the eligible that, um, that are selected across our 20 LGs. Uh, for us in the state, we notice that one of the things that might affect us uh, getting Achieving universal health coverage is the issue of human resource. And we are leveraging on the basic health care provision form to make sure we get uh, midwives in the um, health facilities that are across our 236 wards. And we'll also be making sure that um, we mobilize our clients to this facility through the Community Health Influencers Program. I uh, would like to finally submit that we need the assistance of um, NHIS. We need more of their feasibility at the state level. I know the ES is on this platform. Has tried, uh, they have been able to um, devolve power to the state, but I want him to do more. And I would like to submit that uh, I will want a situation wherein the health, uh, the NHIS in the office uh, at the state level can integrate with the existing state office so that some of the funds that we want to use for infrastructures are diverted to pay premium or capitation for the vulnerable at the state level. At this point, I want to thank every of us and I say thank you very much for a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Elijah. That's, that's good. So um, just to assure all the people that are asking questions in the chat window, we're keeping note of them. We will try as much as possible to get to as many questions as we can during the time. And whatever question that is left, which we feel should be answered, we will make a summary of it and pass it to the sort of appropriate individuals. And we can do a follow-up email. If you leave your email address, we can share. Um, any responses that we've got if we've not been able to answer your question now. So now we're going to move on to um, the other, we've heard from the sort of government side. So let's hear also from 
other participants, other, other stakeholders in the health financing sector. I would like to call on uh, Uzo Okoma, who is a health economist and uh, engagement partner of, uh, sorry. Uh, so who is uh, Uzo Okoma of, of, uh, of Fulway, uh who is a health economist? Uh, an engagement partner with Lauren Lauren Parker, which is an organization that works in this ecosystem. So please also, without uh, much waste of time, uh, could you please uh, share your thoughts on the topic that we're discussing today? And please, please uh, correct any mistakes that I might have made in, in the introduction, sorry. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. and. Um, Welcome to this edition of Protocol Duly Observed. Um, I want to thank the organizer, organizers of this session. Um, it's very apt. Um, Post-COVID, um, we have seen the impact of COVID to the world, and we have seen even more so to uh, a country like ours that has about 77 of, um, some seven percent of out of pocket expend being out of pocket expenditure and that automatically means that for us we were hit if anything probably seven or ten times as hard as the rest of the world and so when um dr mohammed contacted us and said uh so we know you have been doing a lot of work you did a lot of work during the covid era and continuously do work with the, um, with, with um, the public sector and the private sector um, and what are your thoughts about universal health coverage? And I said to him that it's time. We just don't have any choice anymore. So at this point, what we, we have started thinking of springboards. Springboards, springboards, and um, this is what I have. So very first, just so that you know um, what our organization is, um, we're a professional services company um, in consulting and advisory around strategy formulation, business process management optimization. And um, we have been working across different sectors and that is the bane of most of the things we're going to talk about. But healthcare is our strength. Um, that's our focus sector, uh, one of our focus sectors and um, particularly working with government. So currently we are a consultant to educate government and we facilitated the um, passing of the law in Edo State in 2019. Um, we set up the commission and um, employed the first 70 staff of the commission, trained them. Um, so we were focused on people process technology. We just rounded up our technology bit and working with the technology partners, we have started the registration and the connection to the most important connecting um, um, the people to the providers um, using technology and smart resources. But without further ado, I will go in and show some quick numbers. I know we don't have that much time this evening and probably late for quite a few people. Um, one of the numbers we want to show you is this. Um, in, Ni in Nigeria today, um, based on NICE's data, as at May 2020, we have about 42 million Nigerians registered. Um, because of the push the government has had, we hear that once NIMSI releases the new numbers, we expect to hit around 70 million Nigerians. So we have 70 million Nigerians registered on NIMSI. Um, we have about 124 million bank accounts, 79 million active accounts, 45 million inactive accounts. But very important is to see the growth of about 11% um, um, it increased the bank account in the year 2019 alone. Okay. For um, telecommunications, we had about 204 active sub, uh, 204 million active sub subscribers. So these are people who have have recharged their lines in the last one year. So this is what the telco data right. is telling us. Um, so this tells us that very quickly, the strategies that we have deployed in the last 20 years or so have not worked. And usually in developing any, any service, once you identify that the strategy hasn't worked, you immediately change strategy. 
one of the things we have done is that we've not been able enough to change strategy. In changing strategy, one of the things that we called out when we started in Edo State was Edo State must immediately think about the current structure it has outside of healthcare. So if you look at all of us who have participated today in this session, we have all been from healthcare. And healthcare, as we saw last year, and we continue to see through this pandemic, is an industry that affects every other industry. But when healthcare people are discussing, the very first thing we fail to do is introduce people who are non-healthcare to speak to us. So as we sit in meetings over the years, one of the things I always call out is that healthcare can never be isolated. If the financial sector is growing and the health, healthcare industry is not growing, then there's something we're doing wrong. If you find that people from other industries are struggling to understand health insurance, and we have had a law passed since 1999, people that would benefit the most from this law do not even understand what we're saying. So if you're going to sell a product to anybody in the world, and you cannot explain to them what the product is, and they don't appreciate what the product is. There is no design, there is no technology, there is no law that you would pass that would get us there. So the very first thing is for us to go back to the drawing board and think of these numbers. So we said, NIN has 42 million people there. The National Health Insurance Scheme and NIMSI are federal agencies. They have laws that establish their and that that set, that was set for their establishment. If that is the case, why do we have today a situation? And this is now calling out um, what is happening in Edo State. So, because of the BHCPF, we have had to now retune ourselves to get us to register as much people into the vulnerable population, and then get them on BHCPF. Um, I was just trying to get the numbers of. NIMSI registration in Edo State, the last time I checked two years ago, it was 600,000 people. The work we have done in the last three months, we have registered only 4,800 people. Whereas we have a database in the state of 600,000 people ready to receive care. So immediately, our inability to look into the resources outside of healthcare and look at all these other databases that are available. I don't know of any database that is more effective than the bank database and NIMSIS database. So NIMSIS database, are the law of our land says that every Nigerian needs to be registered. Every Nigerian needs to be known. The BHCPF law says every Nigerian should have access to primary health care. Can we say that anybody that is going to have access to primary health care must be a Nigerian? If you must be a Nigerian, then you must be on the MC database. So those simple ways of us going back to the drawing board, sitting and collaborating with organizations to say, what do we need to do to ensure that what these um, resources have already been expended, we can make take advantage of them. So very quickly, many states can go and have access to the MC database integrated to their systems and have it as a prerequisite to have BHCPF. We know that BHCPF in, in principle is free. However, it gives us an opportunity to upsell, which I will talk about later. So that's 42 million people there about waiting to come into the health insurance scheme. Sitting, registered, we know them, we know their location, we know the closest facility to them because we have mapped where they registered. And so immediately we can turn them on. Let's move on to um, um, financial services. So I've just talked about our base database. Financial services, we have now 80 million account holders. These people require healthcare services. Is there any way the NHS can collaborate with the CBN to give incentives to bank and financial institutions to help to aggregate um, these people and ensure that the collections of their contribution can be possible? So we know that there are laws that were set up by CBN, CBN guidelines for health insurance, all sorts of insurance and including health. In that guideline, it is very clear that those guidelines don't take into consideration healthcare. It also does not take into consideration the fact that health is, is actually well. 
So if the financial services companies are trying to build wealth in the country and they have not taken into consideration health, how is it going to happen? So very quickly, we can do quite a lot of things with the CBN. I know that a lot of banks are trying to innovate, but the guidelines do not stifle them. But between the NHIS and CBN, two federal agencies funded by uh, taxpayers' money, these two agencies can come together and innovate around how do we actually, from the beginning, to incentivize banks to get more people registered and to collect premiums. You know, so that's 80 million people waiting to happen. Okay, we now think about telcos, our dear telcos. They came just about 12 years ago, and they have already taken all the market. So we have 204 million people waiting to receive healthcare services. The telcos today speak to them. Remember what we're doing right now with me and the NHIS and the NIN and telco. So now they are telling all of us to link our NIN to our mobile numbers. But nobody is talking about the most important thing. Before we can have mobile numbers, before we can be in the NIN database, we need to be healthy and alive. But that part of the whole process has been isolated because we in the healthcare industry keep speaking to ourselves. We don't introduce the right people to speak to. When we started at Inedo, so the very first thing we did is found, we found out all the different databases already existing in the state, including the taxpayer database. That gave us immediate access to 600 corporates that were taxpayers, and less than 1% of them had access to health insurance. Health insurance in Edo State, for example, is mandatory. The law says it's mandatory. And so immediately, the basis for you to do business in with government, and we have to explain the implication of this to the executive. The basis to do business in Edo State today is that you will not put the Edo, Edo residents at risk. And so you must have health insurance. So when you see corporates in Edo State, they want to do any form of business with government. Anything you want to relate to the government, they must come to the EDIC, the Edo Health Insurance Scheme. I think the DG of the Health Insurance Commission for Edo is here, Dr. Rock, fabulous individual. They must come to EDIC to get a permission, a clearance certificate to say everybody in their organization, as long as they want to do business, if you are an organization and you have less than three people, you shouldn't be doing business in government anyway. So you must have that clearance from EDIC before you can be registered in the States to do business. Immediately we set that up, that we just turned on two weeks ago. We have a pile of corporates waiting to onboard, to come in and receive, um, um, to be enrolled into the healthcare scheme. Now we know what happens when corporates come in. So as long as in the uh, corporate, the formal sector comes in, the informal sector joins one way or the other. Because we have spouses in the informal sector, we have children who are still in the informal sector, we have, um, sometimes you have um, and domestic staff that you now enroll. So the scheme allows you also enroll other people into the scheme. And we're seeing a lot of growth going on there. So with the telcos, we are saying, how do we speak to NC NCC and say that we have the BHCPF program. The BHCPF says every Nigerian is eligible to primary health care services, gotten from 1% of consolidated revenue. As a result, anybody who has telecommunication services must be connected. But we know that there will be a problem. The fund in the BHCPF cannot cover all 204 of us or 210 of us. And so it is an opportunity to upsell for the people who can afford it by proper design and another opportunity to make sure that we reach these informal people that we've been struggling for the last 20 years or so to reach. So immediately we balance this. We can now design out what are we going to do with these services. Now, we also know that today we are struggling with public facilities. The investment in public facilities in the last three day, decades has been very, very poor. There are some incentives that we can provide to big corporates to harness our public facilities. It would come through if we can design out and show them how the BHCPF makes those public facilities sustainable. It also means we need to keep standards in the public facilities, such that if someone pays and they go into Uwelu PHC, in Uwelu PHC, they would see what they, would, they need to see as they would see in Lily Hospital or Lily Clinic. 
those are the things we need to put today. We cannot have a different standard for public and then another one for private facilities. In Edo State, that was one of the things we designed. Very quickly, many public facilities could not sign on and the government now had to really activate to get public facilities to meet the minimum standard. And then we started bringing them in. And today, we have that number coming in in trickles from public facilities. So we will not sign on a public facility that does not meet a minimum requirement. Okay? So it is... How do we now go on and do one main thing as a group? How do we really collaborate? How do we design with other sectors in mind? How do we position ourselves such that the health sector does not look like this thing that nobody understands? How do we bring in people to understand what we do? How do we design with the right thing? How do we think of cost-effective ways to get there? So we cannot have us registering people on BHCPF, going around our villages, jumping helter-skelter. When we have a database that is sitting there of 46 million people already registered that we can turn on immediately, it's interoperability. You just need to integrate and you have the data. Per local government, per word. Thank you. Thank you very much, Uzo. Uh, that was really... <laughs> a uh, great uh, lesson uh, that we could all kind of pick, pick up from. Uh, I will call on, because of time constraint, I'll call on Dr. Aminu Garba Mageshi to give us what can civil society do to help us achieve universal health coverage as fast as possible. Dr. Aminu. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Hope you can hear me well. Yes. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Sadiq, and uh, the moderator and all the uh, speakers this evening. I would like to, I know because of the time factor, I, will, I would like to provide some practical example of how civil society can engage with all the agencies mentioned, national and the state level, to support the implementation of the universal health coverage and also ensure that the insurance scheme are working effectively for Nigerians by the Nigerians. Let me start by giving an example of a scenario in Abuja that happened today. So this morning, uh, under the National Advocate for Health, we attended a meeting with the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, the Basic Healthcare Provision uh, Fund Gateway uh, Project Implementation Team. What we are doing in that meeting was to review a performance scorecard for the BSCPF under the MPCD gateway to look at the performance of the type 6 stage plus FCT uh, in terms of implementation, in terms of how many facilities across the country are ready to receive funds and how many were, are receiving funds at the moment. And also understanding the challenges that the gateway is facing in implementing the basic healthcare provision fund. Just to summarize to you some of the key findings of that scorecard, which is led by civil society, has shown that the entire country, uh, only 13 states that are uh, implementing the MPSCDA gateway have started distributing funding to the primary healthcare facilities. Uh, some of the challenges are delayed at the state level, even though they have gotten money. So this is the kind of example and a role of civil society to promote USC. We engage the government meaningfully. We engage the government uh, actively. And also we raise the bar of accountability and transparency to ensure that the government agencies are delivering for Nigerians. This is one example. And after that meeting, the National Advocate for Health uh, uh, had another two-hour interactive meeting with the Nigeria Governors Forum Health Advisor. And we brought the issue of the scorecard and show him that a lot of states are not doing too well in implementation of the gateway, what could be done. A lot of states are not paying the counterpart funding uh, on an uh, annual basis uh, to ensure that this uh, BCPM is working very well. This is, the, this is the example, the practical way of CSO engaging. Uh, engaging with the governors, with the commissioners, with the CEOs across the state and national level to ensure that these services 
uh, delivering for Nigerians. So this is another example. Then in the afternoon, we rounded up our own state uh, our tour to National Health Insurance Scheme, where we met with the International Collaboration Division, also in trying to understand how the CSOs can support the NHIS. Remember, Professor Sambo mentioned that three cardinal features of the NHIS is accountability, transparency, credibility, and quality of care. For all these uh, items to be implemented, the civil society, they have to be at the table to hold the government to account to deliver, to raise the issue of accountability, to provide quality data, and also ensure that there is transparency in delivery of services. And we should also not forget that before NHIS and the state agencies deliver on their mandate, the National Assembly and the State Assembly, they have to appropriate the funding, you know, annually for the work. That is also where civil society role also uh, comes into play, engaging with the National and State Assembly to ensure adequate funding are uh, allocated for the universal health coverage, the cancer services, immunization, life-saving drugs and commodities, and also ensuring that there is timely disbursement of these resources to all the agencies and tracking the money from the agencies to the facility and also comparing this funding would also improving quality, improving access, and also satisfaction of the client. These are all, you know, practical examples of where civil society are also playing. And I want to wrap up my, uh, you know, examples by saying that majority of all the state health insurance scheme in Nigeria, they were a product of legislative and executive advocacy of civil society uh, groups across the country. So uh, the, the government are implementing the program, but if you trace the origin, many of them were actually legislated. The role of the CSOs are playing in ensuring that. The Basic Healthcare Provision Fund uh, in 2020, the government allocated 25 billion naira, and in 2021, the government allocated 35 billion naira in the budget. Right now, the National Advocate and CSO are working with the Ministry of Finance and the AG office to ensure that this funding are timely disbursed to MPSCDA, NHIS, the emergency services, and also onward distribution to all the 36 state plus FCT. This is the kind of work we do every day at Abuja, at the state level, at the community level, and also in raising demand and also raising the bar of accountability and transparency. I know there's no much time to study, so let me pause here. I can come back if there's any question to answer. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a passionate kind of uh, presentation. Very key point, very practical um, uh, and right on point. I think what or what we can do in order to answer as many questions as possible, if you are one of the panelists and there's a question directed to you on the chat window, can you just go through that and respond directly on the chat window? We will try and fit in uh, a few questions that we will direct to uh, to the panel members. So, um, okay. but by way of by way of summary, I think for people that have missed, we've had the presentation by Professor Sambo, and he's highlighted We're already to us three minutes. Yes, he has highlighted to us, you know, the concept of universal health coverage itself, but he also pointed to some of the challenges that we face as a country where we have almost 82, uh, almost 83 million people who are desperately poor. And health insurance by its nature, it relies on contributions. And how do people contribute when they are desperately poor? I think he talked about some of the key targets that need to be achieved in order to achieve universal coverage in terms of the percentage of GDP that had to be spent on health, the number, the rate, the proportion of out-of-pocket expenditure that we should target. He talked about the evolution of the organization itself and some of the in-house sort of changes that needed to be uh, needed to be done before he set the organization back on pace. Some of the infrastructural development that are coming on board, uh, the the IT hardware and software work that's going on, and some of the innovative schemes that are being developed in order to reach um, people with health coverage. We've heard from Kano where 
I think over 400,000 people already benefiting from from, from, from the service. Uh, and we've had in Bochi uh, laying the foundation, the structural foundation, and now they're at the point of uh, sorting out the operations of the scheme. We've had from, from Ogun, uh, met quite considerable progress. They are wanting more from the federal. Uh, Uzo has kind of asked us to look beyond just health. Let's look at, let's look outside, let's collaborate, let's bring in more uh, uh, more innovation outside the health that help us achieve our target. Uh, um, and finally, Aminu have uh, highlighted what civil society organizations can do. So quickly, there's this idea, if you can just read one question, and I'll read uh, uh, another one. I have my own personal question. If uh, I'll be permitted to do that, I'll ask that. Uh, but um, I'll ask you to do to go with yours first. Okay. So this is to Professor Sambo. I hope he's still here with us. So, with, with regards to universal health care, are there any mechanisms in place to link health insurance with social assistance programs, which are usually targeted to the poor? Is there any way we can link the two together? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there is what is called a national office, a national office of social security and coordinating office. We had a memorandum of understanding with them. Uh, they have a very valid, reliable data of the people that are poor in Nigeria. And uh, we have uh, encouraged the state health insurance agencies to utilize their data in, in taking care of, uh, in, in enrolling the vulnerable segment of the population. And we believe that utilizing their data is fast and it can, easy, can lead to easy enrollment. This is one of the MOU that we have signed. And uh, we had several engagements with the Moscow office to, to, look, to look at further aspects of innovative financing so that more funds can be attracted in, uh, to, to, to support the area of healthcare delivery services for attainment of universal health coverage. This is the entry point we have with them so far. Okay. Thank you very yes. much. Um, I will sneak in that, this one question and then we will round up. Um, I think COVID has taught us a lesson across the world. Um, if I can cite the example of Tanzania, who unfortunately have lost their president to, to COVID, who before his death has denied COVID in his country and therefore did not sign up to some of the programs that are aimed at controlling COVID in the country. If you come close home, we have states, for example, that are denying the existence of COVID and will probably not sign up to interventions beneficial to people in their states. And I don't think NHI as a program can escape also from that kind of uh, political uh, challenges. Not every state in the country would be doing enough in terms of uh, universal coverage. We have heard from a number of states, some are doing very well, some are doing a lot more. But if you happen to be in a state where for no fault of yours, the government just simply didn't prioritize uh, universal health coverage or expanding uh, prepaid uh, health scheme. Can the NHIS provide a window for people living in those states that are vulnerable, who could have been beneficiaries of the basic health care provision fund to directly access the benefits if their state, for example, refuse or are unable to provide the platform? I say universal health Attainment of universal health coverage is not a, a is not a controversial issue. It's a very straightforward issue, and it is a campaign promise for every politician that I will provide healthcare for, for for citizens. No politician will ever step out to look for a vote for uh, among among people. He will not promise provision of healthcare, and uh, this universal health healthcare is a, is a platform upon which the governors are, are, are supposed to actualize the basic political mandates. And uh, one good thing with universal health coverage uh, and, 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 and the basic health care provision fund in Nigeria is that uh, the, the, the money that government is giving 
the money, the, the, the National Health Act has provided that states should establish their health uh, health insurance agencies for them to be access, uh, to be able to access the basic health care provision fund. No sensible governor will see 500 million coming to his uh, to his uh, state through the NHS gateway, and probably another 400 million coming to his, uh, to, to his state through the NPSC gateway and take this thing with levity. Uh, during these few weeks, I had the privilege to meet with governors. For example, when, when we were to go for lunch with the governor of Calabar, of, 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 of Cross River State, we, I, I, I joined him in his car. And within, between the, between the office of the health insurance agency and the, and, and the, and the, uh, stadium where the lunch will take place, we, I had a very, a very good discussion with him on one to one. And uh, he confessed to me that this small journey we undertook, it, it has given him a lot of insight about the need for him to, to take this issue very seriously. And the couple of governor, governors I met, and I passed the issue of, uh, of, of, of this money coming to the federation, from the federation account as a gift for the state. And the state, uh, uh, when I met the governor of, of, of Inugu state, I told him, sir, just listen to what we are talking. The federal government is saying that they are giving you, you, you have 10 children. The federal government is giving you uh, money to cover four of your children. And uh, the federal government is saying they will cover three of your children. And for the money that I will be giving you to cover these three children, you bring a counterfeit fund to cover one of the child. So four children of yours are, 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 are taken care of with the healthcare delivery system. I said, this is a simple analogy that, that you need to understand this uh, funding that is coming from the basic healthcare, healthcare provision. We are giving you money and we are saying that big, bring a counterfeit, which is 25% of the money we put in for you to have your people having, having access to healthcare. There and then the governor of, of, of Inugu State yeah, called the attention of the State Health Insurance Agency that please submit whatever they is spending for, for, for consideration. I think the universal health coverage is a, is, 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 is a carol for all. It's a, it's, it's a mandate for all. It's not like a, a, a one monovalent activity that is controversial. You are saying that a woman who is pregnant should have access to delivery. You are saying that a woman who might likely have uh, a cesarean section will have access to, 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 to surgery. You are saying that those children that have no access to healthcare can have access to drugs, to, uh, to, to, to drugs, to vaccines, and so on and so forth. So, uh, Muhammad, the universal health coverage is a food for everybody. And I'm sure no politician will ever do that. The simple analogy is if you cannot do universal health coverage, that federation money that is coming to your, to your, to your state will be, will, will not be, will not be possible for you to get simple and short. So uh, our cost, our coastal is very clear. And that's why we are very, very optimistic that, that, uh, that universal coverage will be attained in Nigeria. Uh, most of the, uh, the good thing is that because of the partnership we have, most of the states that are launching their health insurance program now, basic health care program. Go ahead, Prof. Program. I, I'm looking for the executive secretary and the team from the NHIS to, 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 to learn. Looks like the line, your line is breaking, Prof. We really would have liked to hear what you're saying. In fact, there are okay, some conflict um, between uh, the launching policy and, and and civil society also, and uh, people like Mogashi will be a very good advocate for for for, for attainment of this uh, very noble uh, program. Thank you. Over. Thank thank you, Prof. Uh, Sadi, are you able to squeeze in one more? Are you from your end? Uh, one question. Let me see. Um, good evening. Hello. I hope you can hear me. Good evening, all. Yes. 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 Uh, my question is for, yes, my question is for Uzo, please. Uh, 
I would like to know if among the from the uh, from the figures he gave us, if she took cognizance of the fact that there are some Nigerians that are already enrolled into health insurance, either I mean through the social insurance or the private health insurance, did, they, did she take that into consideration in the figures that she displayed, you know, for us? Thank you very much. Thank you, no. Um, yeah. who's up, please? Can you... Yes, I did. So we have, for the formal sector, we have about 5% So those who work in corporate organizations and um, the federal agencies um, and the state, state um, agencies. Now, for the remember that it used to be around 3% two years ago, so it has actually grown to um, 5%. Then you have for the informal NHIS, so all the state, state schemes, it used to be less than 1% some three years ago. It has moved on to 3%. So that's why we're now at 8%. But what is more, most important is that these groups of people are registering in other databases and interacting with our systems in other databases. So if we have situations where, yes, you have coverage, but how do we extend? Remember that it's risk pooling. We need the rich to put more money in the, in the pool. We want the poor to put little money in the pool or none. So if we can risk pool, effectively then that's how we can get things going but the rich are not putting money in the pool the poor are not putting money in the pool and then we are expecting that somehow we'll have this exponential growth um from one percent consolidated revenue of course not it would help us but it won't take us to uhc thank you Uzo. just one last if you could just be patient with us uh, tijani hussein was supposed to speak earlier i can see his hands up Tijani, we'll give you one minute. Um, thank you, Dr. Sadiq. Sorry, uh, my network has been uh, fluctuating since um, the beginning of this webinar. Uh, I just want to make this quick comment. Uh, while um, most of the presentation focused on making funding available for universal health coverage, however, there is a very important um, caveat that we need to um, consider. Um, how ready are our facilities? Uh, how, are, how are they ready to provide the needed quality services? Not any service, but quality service. So that, yes, when we are talking about universal health coverage, yes, we are talking about quality care, about efficient services, about people getting the right care they need to provide. And how ready are our our primary health care facilities to provide such services. Uh, we know that tertiary care, secondary care will not be able to provide us with the uh, needed universal health coverage. Uh, so the focus of um, primary health, um, our focus should be how do we strengthen uh, these primary health care facilities? Uh, how many states have quantified the need to provide this basic care? Uh, so that is a very important question that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, so, for example, in Kano, uh, we have had what we call um, since 2019, 2019, uh, um, 2020, early 2020, we have um, a costed investment plan that if we want to provide primary health care to people of Kano, how much actually do we require? How much input do we need to? To, to put in uh, so that the conversation is not only talking about the money part, but again, it's talking about the services themselves and the quality of the services. My comment. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that's really super. Um, I think we are getting to the end of uh, the program. We are sorry we have gone 15 minutes over the time that we have planned, but you can agree that this is a very interesting conversation. I have certainly learned a lot. There are so there is so much happening in the country which we don't know, and I think this is kind of a beginning of the conversation. I have learned a lot about what's happening uh, across uh, different sectors. We have looked at uh, opportunities as well for civil society as well as some of the uh, opportunities that are out there that we haven't been looking at uh, outside. The, the health sector and thank you to Jani for highlighting what uh, the other aspect of um, 
universal health coverage is not just the money, but also the service itself. So the money is supposed to pay for services. So if the services are not there or not good enough, then what's the use of getting the money? So thank you very much, everyone. I will now hand over to, hand over to Sadia so that we can wrap up. Well, thank you, Dr. Sadiq. Uh, very good moderation. I would like to express my appreciation to the speakers, uh, Professor Sambo, and all the panelists for their valuable contributions to this webinar. We have great challenges and also great opportunities, as we've heard from everybody. And with everyone's help and commitment going forward, we can achieve universal health for Nigerians. No one is safe until everybody is safe. So, um, yeah, I'm just hoping that you can join us in our next webinar, which is going to be in May. And all the recordings, you can look on our YouTube channel. You know, there are also previous webinars there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.